Now, in this video of WCF, we'll start working with the per session instance management. As we already know what this instance management is all about. So now, in per session, basically the instance of the service will be created for the specific users. That means, for all the specific users, they would be having a specific instance of the service. Whenever the first request will be made by any particular session that is any user the instance will be created for that particular user and if it is not destroyed cause of timeout or any other particular reason that is abnormal termination of application the instance for the specific user will be maintained and every time the same session will make a request it will be responded by the same instance. So let's see what all changes we'll have to make in our application to make it per session instance management. So let's see it practically now. Now in the previous video of per call instance management, what I have done, I have just do a single change where just before the class in the service behavior attribute, I have changed the instance, instance context mode from per call to per session and rest of the thing is same. One more change that I have done here is that I am printing the session ID on the console means whichever session will make a request here on the console of the server I will print the session ID of that particular session and here in app.config I have again done a single change where I have added one binding tag inside the system.service model and inside this since we are using the net TCP binding so inside this net TCP binding because it is the one who supports the instance modes so and most importantly this net TCP binding supports the session alright so inside this net TCP I have done the binding uh, I passed one binding tag inside which I have put a name just like name net TCP binding and here there is a receive timeout in receive timeout what, what I have done basically is after 10 seconds I am just expiring this particular session it is just for the uh, trial purpose in the real scenario you can put some time up to 10 15 20 minutes as per your requirement and here in the endpoint I will add one more thing that is the binding configuration so in binding configuration I'll just pass the name net TCP binding so that it will follow this particular scenario all right, by mistake, I added net HTTP binding tag here, but since we are using net TCP binding, I will add this particular tag. So it was giving me an exception. I'll execute it now. All right, so now the server instance is ready. Let's come to the client and see how, what changes I'll have to make there. So first of all, I'll come and update my service references so that it will be updated to the per session instance mode. And apart from that, since I wanted to get the session ID here on the client side also, so I added one more label where in first I am showing the counter as per the previous video and here using the client instance dot inner channel dot session ID, I am printing the session ID on the client side also. So let's click here and for this session, I am getting this as the session ID and you can see unlike the previous video this time the value is being incremented and every time you are making a request the session ID is getting printed on the server side as well but you may observe one more thing that here the session ID on both the client and server is different so for correcting that let's first stop the server and the client so for that I'll come back to my server and in app.config I'll add one more thing in this binding that is the reliable session enabled is equal to true. So let's build it again and let's start the server. Let's update the service reference and now I'll again execute it. So you see since it's per session it is getting incremented every time and let's check 
on the console also. This time I'm getting the same IDs like starting with A, 8B35, 8B35, ending with F95, F95, all right? So this is how every time when you will make a request, it will keep working on that particular session and that session will last for 10 seconds. Once you cross that, it is going to give you an exception. So it's better to put this particular code inside a try-catch block in order to handle the coming exceptions.